Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayyami, Chulin Daf Peihei. We begin at the Mishnah, which is around 15, 18 lines from the top. It says the Mishnah, Shoichet, if one does a Shechita on a Chaya or a bird, which would typically necessitate covering of the blood. So we're back to the Mitzvah of Kisi Adam, where you cover the blood of the Shechtar animal with earth. He does a shechita, but it turns out that he can't really eat the animal. Why? He discovers it to be internally deficient, classified as a trefa, which is forbidden. That's one example of an unsuccessful shechita, which the Gemara will call shechita she'ina ru'uya. See, physically it was a formal act of shechita, but in terms of you know, the resulting product did not produce edible material. Let's call it an inedible shechita, just for short, okay? Another example, He does shechita on the Nechaya uh, as a service to an idol, which once again forbids the material from consumption. You can't even have benefit from it. Another example, he takes a privately owned animal, does shechita on the Beis HaMikdash, you can't eat it. Another example, Bekachem Bachutz, he does shechita on a carbon outside the base of And finally, Chaya Vaif Haniskal, Mishach Tzachaya, or bird which were condemned to death by the Bezdin due to the fact that they attacked somebody, etc. All these are examples of shechita she'in ru'uya. It was a, a formal, physical act of shechita, but it was an inedible shechita. Does it require kisu hadam? Ramir Machayib, he says, sure. Shechita is a shechita. Ve'achachamim poitrim, chachamim disagree. Only an edible shechita, only a shechita ru'uya, which produces edible material, requires kisu hadam. Because the Pasuk says, asheria achel, it must be available for consumption. So in the next category, we have, ha'sheichet v'nisnab It wasn't really even a, a formal, a proper act of shechita. He did, you know, he started it, then became an avela, it sort of veered out, it wasn't a proper cut. The animal died, where he attacked the, um, he damaged the tubes, he pulled out, he uprooted the, the tubes. In all these cases, all agree that he is potamal chasis, is exempt from doing kisi adam, because these don't even qualify as an act of shechita. So we basically have three categories. On the one side we have a proper physical act which produced edible material. Shechita ru'uya, that requires kisi adam. On the other side, the other extreme we have, noicher, he punctured the tubes, ma'akari, he didn't do an act of shechita. All agree, there's no kisi adam, that doesn't qualify. In the middle we have a ma'asa shechita, which it's called She'ena Ru'iyah because it doesn't produce edible material. That is subject to Machlaikis. Chachamim say, Pater, it needs to be edible to necessitate Kisi Adam. Ramir says, Chayev in Kisi Adam. Now, interestingly, this is the second time we've had in you know recent uh, history a discussion regarding defining the... the um, the status of a Shechita She'ena Ru'iyah. We had it by Yosef Espenoi in the previous parak. What happens to this middle category of Tai of Shechita? Shechita she'en ruya. Does it trigger the mitzvah Oisev es benoi? We are machlekes. Rabbi Shimon says no. Shechita she'en ruya is not considered a valid Shechita regarding Oisev es benoi either. So if you shech the mother today in this manner, you can shech the offspring the same day. Only Shechita ruya is counted in. And likewise, by Kisi Adam, Reb Shimon also would hold that if it's not a Shechita Ru'uya, there's no Kisi Adam. Whereas the opposing view disagrees. So interestingly, we have sort of a discrepancy in terms of how the Mishnah presents what is the consensus view, which is presented as Chachamim, right? The consensus view. So here we have Chachamim saying there's no Kisi Adam unless it's edible Shechita, which lines up with Reb Shimon's Shechita. 
Whereas back in Oisev as Benoi, Rabbi Danasi, Rabbi Akadosh, who compiled the Mishnayis, presented the consensus view to be in line with the um, opposing Shita. Unlike Rabbi Shem, even a Shita She'en Ru'ya triggers the mitzvah of Oisev as Benoi. Says the Gemara, Amr Rabbi Chia Bar Abba, Amr Rabbi Yechanan. In fact, that's uh, actually the case. Ro'a Rabbi. You see, Rabbi adopted the word of Shel Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Meir Shita, that even a Shita, which is inedible, it's considered valid, he adopted it regarding Boise of Espinoy. And therefore, Vishon Eblash and Chachamim presented it as a consensus. Universally accepted Shita Chachamim. That was the Psak Alochas, so the Rebbe and his Bezin took on that Shita, and that became the rabbinic view, so to speak. On the one hand. On the other hand, when it comes to Kisi Adam, he switched tracks. He adopted Reb Shimon's Shita, that it has to be an edible Shita, or the Reb Shimon by Kisi Adam. And therefore, if you look closely in our Mishnah, it's a no name Shita. It says Vachacham and Paitrim. Not attributed to a specific person, to Reb Shimon, because he wanted it to become the consensus view. Therefore, he presented a blushing hacham, so it becomes the accepted practice. So now we're going to sort of analyze the machlokes on both accounts and the uh, the basis for their respective positions. My time with the Rav Meir by Benoi. Why is it the Rav Meir holds regarding Oisev Esbenoi? Even an inedible shchita counts. Amar Shabbat and Levi. He has a Gzera Shava, Gamar Shechita. It says Shechita by Oisev Esbenoi, Leish Eshchatu. And it says Shechita by Mishchut Echutz, by the um, carbon that was shechted outside the Mikdash. We compare notes. Just like over there, it's certainly inedible. You take a carbon, you shechted it outside, it's gone. Ma'asam, just like there, Shechita Shein Ru'uya. And it's still considered Shema Shechita, he's liable for it. Avachanam, he resolved by Oisev Esbenoi. Even this type works. Shechita Shein Ru'uya is considered Shema Shechita. That's Rav Meir's opinion. Rav Shimon. He disagrees. He says it has to be an edible shita to be counted in for Oisav Espinoy. Why? My time of one. Omar of Mani Patish. He has a different Zerah Shav. Gomar, he compares the shita of Oisav Espinoy to a pasuk that we have in Mitzrayim by Yosef HaTzadik who says, Mitvoyach Tevach Vahochen Slaughter the animal, prepared for the meal. He was preparing a fee. It was meant to be edible. Mahasim, just like over there, Malahalam, shita Ru'uya. It is an edible shita. Afkan shchita ruya, like I was over here. Oisev es benoi requires an edible shchit. No, for a mayor nami ligmar mitvoyach. Why doesn't a mayor compare it to the pasuk of tvoyach to indicate edibility? Well, he says it's a different word. He prefers comparing shchita to shchita rather than comparing shchita to tvoyach, even though the meaning is the same, but the word is different. Done, and we compare, we connect shchita mi shchita by us to the uh, Pasuk by Shchut Echutz, very done in Shchit HaMetvich as opposed to Tvicha, which is a different word. Man of Kimina, what's the difference? The meaning is the same. Matan Rebbe Shmuel, we learned that as long as the meaning is the same, we don't dwell on semantics. With Shava Koin, one Pasuk says the Koin returned to the house that had the Nega. Uba Koin, he came. It's all the same thing. He came to the house. Zui Shiva, Zui Bia, returning, coming, it's all the same thing. We compare them. So the same here. Well, that's when you, you have no better option. Maybe that's only true. We don't hesitate to compare pair, you know, even if it's not a perfectly matching match, but that's only there is no other better match. But in our case, we have a better option. Go to Shchut Echutz, where it actually says the word Shchita, which is identical to the, the word by Yosef Espen. We prefer comparing and learning from the similar word, from the, you know, same exact word. Ligma Mishchut Echutz. Now comes Rav Shimon. Rav Shimon says that we learn from Tvoyach Tev Havach and it has to be edible. Why not learn from Mishchut Echutz that it need not be edible? He says, look, it's, it's not really a proper comparison. Don and Chulin Mechulin. I prefer comparing Oisoy Vespanoi, which is a Chulin scenario, a regular animal, Mechulin from Chulin of Tvoyach Tev Havach. As opposed to shchut echutz, which is a carbon, a different type. Vein don chul mechul, rather than mekachim, rather than comparing chul to kachim. So I'd rather learn chul from chul than learn it from kachim. No, Vermeer, he responds, atu oisev es benoi bekachim ilay noig. 
It's true. Uh, technically, Oisev Espinoy is not strictly kosher, but it also applies to Karbanois uh, animals. Hence, it's a fair comparison to Shchut Echutz. Says the Mara Hainu. Hainu, the Kamar Bechia, on this Rebchia told us that in fact Rebbe adopted Rameir's uh, argument, his position, Ro Rebbe Dvarosh Rameir, regarding what qualifies as a Shechita Ba'is Vespinoi, even inedible does qualify because he learns it from the Shechut uh, Echutz, as per Rameir's you know, uh, presentation. And since he adopted that view, Bishana, he presented it as a consensus, Belosh Chacham consensus view. Okay, so that settles that. We have Omrach Lekes, by Oisev Es Benoi. Ramir says, even a Shechita Shein Ruiya qualifies, he learns from Shechita Echutz. Rabbi Shemesh says, it needs to be Shechita Ruiya, he learns from Tvayach Tavah Vahachin. And Rabbi picked Ramir in this, uh, in this regard. Let's shift to Kisiyata. Very same Machlekes. What are the reasons behind the Machlekes? My time with the Ramir Bekisiyata. Why is it that Ramir says, Bekisiyata, even a Shechita? Shein Ruiya is counted. Amr Pshim Malakish Gamar Shvicha Shvicha Mishchut Echutz. Once again, he goes to Shchut Echutz. This time, comparing the word Shchita, Shvicha. It says Shvicha by Kisi Adam. Shavach is Damay. Likewise, by Shchut Echutz, it says Dam Shavach. We compare the two. Malah Halon Shchut Shein Ruiy. Just like Shchut Echutz, it's not a successful edible Shchita and still counts. Shmo Shchita Afkan. Here as well by Kisi Adam. All you need is the act of Shchita and. Uh, and that's it. Afkan shkita shein ruya is considered shmo shkita. Reb Shimon he responds, no. Look at the pasuk by Kisi Adam. It says Asher Achel, a creature that will be edible. Ksiv. It must be edible. For Reb Meir he responds, yeah, that's to exclude an inedible species, an unkosher animal, unkosher bird. But as long as it's a kosher bird, it doesn't have to be practically edible. Post shkita, Reb Meir Ahu Lemutei of Tamei Udas. It's come to exclude a non-kosher bird. Reb Shimon he responds, Yeah, but for the same reason that you're excluding a non-kosher bird because of its inedibility, then likewise a trefa as well. Oif Tamei my time. Why are you excluding the Oif Tamei? La Barachilu because it doesn't conform to Achila. It's not edible. Trefa Nami La Barachilu. The same with the trefa. How would you differentiate? And in fact, Rebbe Bidanasi, Rebbe Akadish adopted this position. Vayim Dama Reb Chia. As Rabbi tells us, Rabbi Dvarav Shabbos Shem Kisi Adam. In fact, Rabbi Shimon, his uh, position found favor in Rabbi's eyes regarding Kisi Adam. That even a shkita that you need a shkita ruya, and therefore in our Mishnah we see it in Lashon Chacham Veshan of Lashon Chachamim because that's the Psak Haloch. Okay, so summation. Uh, in both by Oisev as Benoy and Kisi Adam, we have the very same machlokes. Rabbi Shimon says it has to be a shkita ruya. Edible shkita, successful shkita. Uh, Rameir disagrees. Regarding Oisev es Benoi, Rabbi Danasi Paskin like Rabbi, even inedible shkita counts. But Kisi Hadam, he Paskin like Rabbi Shimon, we need a shkita ruya ashaya och. Om Rabbi Abba, we turn to him in base. Loy lekoil Omar Rameir, shkita shein ruya shma shkita. It's not regarding every single application the Rameir will hold. But even a shkita shein ruya, an unsuccessful shkita, an inedible shkita, is counted as a valid shkita, not regarding everything. I mean, Rame would agree if you take a, an animal, which is, a, let's say, a treif and you shecht, you can't eat it, so the shkita doesn't work all the way. I mean, it works for Kisi Adam, it works for Eisivest Benay, but not uh, to permit its consumption. That's one point. On the other hand, Veloy Lekoil, Amar Ab Shimon, not regarding every halacha, does Ab Shimon insist that Shechita Shein Ruya Loy Shema Shechita, that inedible Shechita doesn't count? There's one exception. Maider Ab Shimon, even Ab Shimon would agree, Shema Ta Rasa Midin Avela, it spares it from becoming a dead animal and sliding into the tomb of an Avela. I mean, Shechita is a Shechita. So, it's not considered a dead animal. Let's go review what we just said. Amar Rababa teaches us that it isn't really all encompassing. It's not regarding every single halacha. The Rabbi considers the shkita 
which is Ein Ruya as a Shrit. Moidur of Meir Shem Atarasa Ba'achil, of course, Rameh would agree that this Shrita will not permit it. It says the more Pshita, of course, it goes without saying. I mean, it's a trefa animal. Trefa, Bashrita, Mim Why would you say that a trefa animal becomes Muta through Shrita? I mean, that's out of the question. Oh, Litzricha must be that he's speaking about a more complex case. The mother animal was a treif. And after its shechit, he discovered an unborn animal inside Ben Pekua, a full-fledged, full-term, nine-month Ben Pekua. And that's his point. Don't think that the shechit of this mother, despite the fact that we count it somewhat as a shechit, despite that it's not permitting the mother animal for consumption, it's considered a shechit regarding certain halachas, don't think that the offspring within it can sort of benefit from that shechit. It's considered like it's taken care of and you can eat it without shechit. That was his point. The shechit of the mother helps somewhat. But ultimately, it's not going to permit the offspring within it to be eaten. Because look, you can't have it both ways. If the offspring is inherently part of the mother, the mother is a treifa, so you can't use the uh, shrita of the mother, which is not really an edible shrita, to permit the child. And if the child is a separate entity, so then he needs his own shrita anyway. So, you can't have a book. That's a, that was his point. The tzrich must be speaking, the shechet is a trefa. The mother animal was classified as a trefa. Inedible. He did the shechita. Well, matzah, but mentes chai, found a live, full-term, nine-month offspring inside. And the point is, it needs its own shechita. It can't bank on the mother's shechita. Why would I think otherwise? Salkadaitach. I mean, there would be room to think. Hoyla de Amar Meir. Since Rameh teaches us that shkita, she'ena ru'iya, even an inedible shkita, such as in this case, the shkita of the mother, is shma shkita, has validity. Tahanen li shkita sima. Perhaps even this shkita of the mother animal can carry over to the offspring. But the boy shkita, which would permit it without shkita. To Mashmon, the point is that it doesn't work. Ask the Gemara. I mean, that's ABC. I mean, we know that according to mayor, anyways, a full-term offspring within a mother animal doesn't get exempted by the mother's uh, shkita. We had this, you know, in the back in the fine Dalit. But Tizpura, how could you say that he's talking about this case? If Amr Rameir, Rameir already taught us that Ben Pekua, a full-term, full-month Ben Pekua inside the mother, turns shkita needs his own shkita. So discount all the issues of treif. I mean, even a full-term healthy offspring within a full-term, within a full uh, healthy kosher mother animal needs its own shkita. In any case, in any case, Leitzricha must be speaking like this. That Rabbi Abba's point was: Look, you're right. According to a mayor per se, according to a mayor's personal shita, this is a, a non-starter. Every full-term ben pekor needs its own shkita. The point that he was making was like this, that Rabbi, Rabbi Danosi, Rabbi HaKadosh, who compiled the Mishnais, who, as learned earlier, had adopted Ramirez's opinion, somewhat, regarding Yosef Ezbenoi, that even an inedible shrita counts, has validity. So let's focus on Rabbi. So on the one hand, he passed like Ramir. It's a valid shkita, but at the same time, he goes with the, with respect to the broader question of a ben pekua. He always liked the rabbanon shkita, right? And that element, he always liked the rabbanon. That even a full term, full month, a full term, full fully developed ben pekua discovered inside a mother animal is exempted by the mother shkita. So you're right. Remember, per se, disagrees with that point. But we're talking about Rebbe now, focusing on Rebbe. He picked and chose opinions, right, and sort of. Sew them together. So when it comes to defining what is considered shkita, paskin like Rameir, even a shkita shen is considered shkita. But when it comes to um, establishing the status of a ben pekua, he adopted the rabbanon shkita, the consensus view. Even a full term ben pekua is muttered by the mother shkita. And that was what Rabbi Abba was referring to. Well, it's it must be like this. The Rebbe, we're going like Rebbe shkita. The Sava like Rabmeir. He was like Ramir, even an inedible shrita counts. With Savalak Rabbanon, and regarding Ben Pekor, he held like the Rabbanon. The Gemara explains itself. Savalak Rabmir, he was like Ramir, the Amar Shkita Shein Rish, Amar Shkita. On the other hand, regarding a, the general Ben Pekor issue, 
which is a bit unrelated. On that he held like the Rabbana, the Amri who says, Shechidah's imam tarase. Shechidah of a mother animal accommodates the unborn found inside, even if it's full term, fully developed. So now, Kivan the Amr Rabbanon Shechidah's imam tarase. Going in line with the Rabbanon who say, that typically Ben Pukua is covered by the mother Shechidah. So what happens in our case? We discover the Ben Pukua inside a mother animal who's a trefa, who had Shechita. Perhaps it works. In line with Ramirez's position that even a Shechita, which is inedible, is considered, has validity. So perhaps it carries over to the unborn and permits him without his own Shechita. To handle the Shechita, without his own Shechita. He doesn't need his own Shechita. Kamash Mulan, the point is no. As we explained before, because you can't have it both ways. Sure, the mother of Shechita has validity regarding Oisev as Benoi, Kisi Adam, but ultimately it wasn't matter, it's a trefo, so that Shechita cannot be matter the offspring. It needs its own Shechita. We learned this the other day, right? It has like, considered like it has four simanim, it has two options. You can shech the mother, accommodate him, or you can shech him himself. In this case, you'll have to shech him himself. Okay, that was one part of Rabbi Abba's statement. On the other hand, regarding Rabbi Shimon, don't think it applies to all situations. Don't think that Rabbi Shimon's position that an inedible shechita has no validity applies in all situations, regarding all halachists. There is an exception. Rabbi Shimon would agree, would concede, it spares the animal from becoming an avail. After all, it didn't just drop, it didn't just die. You did shechita to us, even though it's not uh, halakhically valid regarding being counted as, uh, you know, for kisi adam, but ultimately the animal didn't die. Pshita says, well, of course, it's old news. When you do shechita on a treifa, you spared it from becoming an avail. It's old news. Pshita, damar vidamar rav. I mean, some say it's a bride, masi satana. Look at the, the pasik. Vichiyam is mina behema. Sometimes a behemoth that dies is tame. Miktas, behemoth matame. Sometimes a dead animal is matame. But miktas, behemoth matame. Sometimes not. Which one is not? A trefa, shashachta. He shachta a trefa. Despite its inedibility, it's not going to become an available. So, of course, I mean, that we don't need, you know, Rabbi to come to you. It's old. So, I think more, yeah, you're right. It must be a more complex case that you're referring to. Letzricha must be the shechat sa trefa v'yichun bazor. Okay, it wasn't a simple shkita on a trefo. He did it in the Azhara, in the Beisam Hikdash. Chulm is an Asr. And we're going with the opinion now that the Isra is Minat based on a Pasuk. Pasuk says, Ki yirchak mimcha amaka in Bezabachta, when you're far away, when you're outside Beisam Hikdash, that's when you do the shkita. Don't do the shkita of your private animal in the Beisam Hikdash. Pasuk says Bezabachta, we're talking about an act of, of a proper act of shkita. That would forbid the chulen that was shechted in the azar from consumption. The sanya, as per the brisa, a shechted is a trefa. He knows that this animal is a trefa. It's missing, you know, a thigh. V'chein a shechted limps a trefa. Or another example, after shechted discovers to be internally wounded, it's a trefa. Both inedible. Zevza, in both cases, we're talking Chulin Bazar. It's a private animal, Shechtan and the Azar. Rabshem Amatir Bahano. According to Rabshem, you can benefit from it. It doesn't qualify as Chulin Bazar. Why? Chulin Bazar is only us when you do a formal, proper, successful act of Shechita. But here, it's an inedible Shechita. To begin with, it was a Trefa. Shechita is not relevant. It's not a valid act of Shechita, and it doesn't trigger the Isr, the status of Chulin Bazar. Chacham say no, even a shechita she'en ru'ya. This type of shechita is considered an act of shechita, and um, the animal is classified as a chul and shenish shechita ba'azor. That's also. So once we see that according to Rabbi Shimon, in this case, where there were two <laughs> problems with the shechita, shechita on a treif, and it was in the wrong ba'azor. Two strikes against the uh, against the shechita. So that that would give us room to think to consider. Once Rav Shimon says it's muter bano, which means we discount the act of shechita. Apparently, it's not regarded as a shechita at all. So 
perhaps it's like a dead animal. In this case, it would be uh, black nevela. Ema mi de nevela nami loy mitaru. Perhaps this uh, quasi act of shechita can't even spare it from coming a nevela kamashma on the point of Rabbi Abbas to say yes. A nevela, it's not. It's true. We don't count it as an act of shechita regarding many things. Kisi adam oisiv es benoy. Even to make it chulam bazor, but ultimately it didn't drop. It didn't die. It doesn't have the, uh, perhaps it doesn't have the positive effect of the shechita, but after all, it didn't just die on you, right? So, at least an avela it will not be. Okay? So before we, we proceed, we had Rabbi Abba's statement, referring to Rabbi Meir, who says that shechita, shenaruya, is a shechita, but you should know. It won't work regarding the ben pekua inside. On the other hand, we have Rabbi Shimon, who says shechita, shenaruya, loishma shechita, but still, uh, an avela will not be considered. Okay, here comes one more point on this, uh, you know, Chulun Bazar discussion. So it was based on that pasuk here, Chakim Chamakim Zavachta, that Chulun Bazar is only an issue if there was an act of zvicha, an act of shchita, which counts as a valid ma'ase shchita. I'm going to probably not buy. V'savar Rab Shimon Chulun Bazar da Raisi. So you mean to say, according to Rab Shimon? The Chul Mazar phenomenon is based on a Pasuk, in which case the, the wording of the Pasuk indicates to us the parameters of the Yisr. What's the other option? You see, Rashi explains the other alternative is that it's Midrabbanon. There's another Shida, Chul Mazar is Asr Midrabbanon. What's the concern? That people might confuse and think, well, oh, look, he's doing a Shrit on the Azar, it must be a carbon animal. And then he goes and walks out with it, eats it, you know, out of town. You can consume a carbon out of your shalim, out of so it's going to create confusion. So the Chacham were, were concerned about optics, right? And according to that perspective, whichever act of shechita he does, whether it's a shechita ruuya or ein ruuya, it would still trigger that alarm, that concern. After all, people don't differentiate. I see you're doing a shechita, you took the meat outside, you're eating it. So if this whole con- concern would be mid there would be no room to differentiate between an edible shechita, inedible shechita, always it would be us. So I could have shimmer differentiate because he's based on the Pasuk. He holds his minatoyer and the Pasuk specifies shechita, only something which conforms to vizavach, which qualifies as an act of shechita, as opposed to shechita shenirui. That would not make it us, as chul mazor. So again, the premise here is of a suburb of Shimon Chulm Bazar the Raisi. Is Rav Shimon in fact rooting the Yalach of Chulm Bazar in a Pasuk? Amalei and he says, yeah, right on, right on. We have a Raya, a clear Raya. But now we have a Mishnah of Shimon Oimer. Chulun Shinishchata Bazar. If he did Chulun the Azar, he got to burn it. You saw it. Beish. And he says, guess what? It doesn't only apply to a, a behema, which can be confused with carbon, carbon is our behema, even a, a giraffe, an animal, a deer, which you know for sure is not a, be- a carbon. There's no optics issue, there's no confusion here. Same story, it's asr, because it's minhatayra, any animal in the base of is asr. So, of course, if in fact it's based on the pasuk, you can understand. Why it applies equally to behema or chaya? Hainu de Gazrinon that explains why we apply the iser in a chaya out of behema on account of behema. And Rashi says that uh, the wording here is just uh, on account of the next uh, part of the of the Gemara. Because really, if it's minat Torah, then it's just an absolute iser. Whether it's a chaya or behema, it's not one on account of the other, right? In any case, it would apply equally to both. We understand. Eli Amr's the Rabbanon, but if it's only with the Rabbanon concerned about optics, then only Behima would trigger that concern. He does a Chaya and Beis Midrash. We all know it's not a Behima. It's not a carbon. There's no room for confusion. Eli Amr's the Rabbanon. If it's only a rabbinic concern, Behima, my time. Why, if he shechts a Behima, the Azor is at Asr? Why? Dilma Asil Mechel Kachim Machutz. It can confuse the observer. It might say, well, what the do is from here. You can eat carbonus outside the Midrash. Look, he did this Behima inside. He took it outside. Assumingly, it's a carbon, so I can take any carbon outside. Okay, so that's one level of concern. And we all know that by 
rabbinic concerns, we stop at one level. We don't do a double deck or this on account of that and account of that. He go for xerus, this in itself. The forbidding of a behema. Chulun bazar is a xerus. The rabbanon might confuse people and lead to do the same by a carbon. Van an ekum venigzer. So should we go and stretch it further and apply to a chaya as well, which is a gzera ligzera concern on top of another concern? So clearly, Reb Shimon is based on the Torah. It's a deraisa, and therefore it requires an act of shchita, shchita ruya. Here comes a story. Reb Chia had a story like this. Nafale yaniva. He discovered the uh, some. Te, te la, some sort of worm in his um, in his flax. He had some flax uh, fibers soaking in the pool there, as they would have. And there's some uh, parasites there, ruining his flax. Bikitne also came with the rebbe. He came to his uncle rebbe for some advice. Amrli he says, look, I'll tell you how to get rid of it. Shkoil eifa, take a bird. This uh, worm doesn't like uh, bird uh, blood. V'shachet and do shchit on the bird. Al bo bisa demai on the pool of water where the pishtan is soaking. The moirach dama, so the uh, worm will smell the blood and v'shavakli and disappear. End of story. Ask the Gemara, how can we use the blood of a bird? It, it needs to be covered in earth. Kisi adam hechi avad hachi. How can we tell him to do this? How can he? Uh, do the shechita on the on the pool of Atani we have a brisa a shechet v'terach l'adam chayv l'chas a person does shechita on a bird because he has a need for the blood yeah you can't just take it you have to cover it with the earth ketzad so what's the uh, solution if you need it oy no yecharay oy oykray forget a formal shechita just you know puncture the tubes rip out the tubes don't do a, an act of shechita because if you do an act of shechita you're stuck you have to do uh, you can't take the blood. So what happened to the story here? Ki Asr of Dimi, so we have two answers. Of Dimi came and he explained, Omar, he says, you're right, he didn't instruct him to do shkita on the bird. That would necessitate kisi adam. Omar, treif Amrali. he told him, first make the bird a treif, a pull of its leg, or whatever, um, in which case it's a shkita sheni ruya. And even when you follow with a shkita, you don't have to do kisi adam. Say treif Amrali. Ki Asr Rabban, Rabban came, he... Uh, Clarified for us, Amar, he said, say in the Amale. He told him to just, uh, you know, damage the, the tubes and kill it like that. And if there's no act of shkita, there's no kisiyada. Now we're going to try to resolve why Rabdimi um, had his version that it was a trefa, and Rab and his version that it was nechur. Lamanda matzrei treif, the one that says treif, my time in the Amale saying, why did Rebbe pick that one as opposed to just killing the animal? Perhaps it's because Rebbe holds that even if you kill the bird, it's like it's shechita, because it doesn't need a formal shechita. And it, in that case, it would need kisi adam. So it wouldn't help you much. There's no formal act of shechita by a bird. Really? And doing nechira. It's technically like a shechita, in which case it would need kisi adam, but it's incorrect. Rebbe himself in a brisa teaches us otherwise. Vatan, Rebbe Oimer, we have a pasuk hashet to be sicha. Pasuk says you do shechita on the, uh, the animals hashet to be sicha, as I had instructed you, Hashem to Moshe. Where do we find? Look throughout the Torah. We don't find anywhere any detailed instructions in terms of how to do shechita. Oh, well, the oral Torah was Torah Shabbat Peh. This is one of the riots of Torah Shabbat Peh. Torah is saying, look. Do shechita as I had already instructed. Where, when, orally. Torah Shemal Peh was passed down orally. Kashet Zebesicha Malamid. We learn from Mishnah. Stava Moshe Alosh Ala Veshet Valakana. Moshe Ben was taught by Hashem all the details of shechita. The Veshet, the Kana, Safagas, the Trachea need to be severed by the shechita. So location. Val Rav Yechad Boy Val Rav Shnei Bebehema. The by a bird, it's most of one tube qualifies as shechita by a behema needs most of both. So we turn we learn about the procedure. We turn to the next page. So clearly, Rebbe required a proper shechita by bird. So uh, why did he uh, insist on telling him to make it a tray? For why couldn't he just do some sort of other way of killing the animal, a bird? And since it wasn't a proper shechita, there would be no kisi adam. Let me buy a ka'amar. Rav Dimi, when he said, that Rebbe told him to say Treif. It goes without saying, of course, Nechira would have done the same thing. 
Let me buy a kamer. Let me buy a tzayin nechur. Of course, if you would have told him tzayin nechur, lavshkete iklal. That's a non-starter. It's not a ma'aser shkita. Of course, they don't need kisui. The chiddush was I will say with shreif. But if you tell them to go make it a shreif and then do shkita, Ema perhaps there's room to think that he didn't really solve the issue because shkita sheinu ruish ma shkita. Even though it's not edible, but it's an act of shkita. It's considered like an act of shkita. But the kisui would require kisui kamash malon. So that was Rabbi Dimi's point uh, that kid Rav Chiba as Rav Chiyah Baba told us earlier, that according to Rabbi HaKadosh, Rabbi Danasi, um, he adopted, you know, uh, regarding Kisi Adam, he adopted the opinion that it needs to be a Shkita Ruya. And that's why this was a solution to the issue. Okay. Well, Ma'adam would say Nechur, according to the other version of events, Ravin's version, that he told him to go kill the bird. Why uh, specifically that way? Why not just say it's Raif? My time will only say it's Raif. Perhaps uh, you can say kasaber shchita sheinuish ma shchita. The reason why tzvei tzvei wouldn't be a solution because if it's a proper act of shchita, even though it's an edible shchita, would still require kisi adam. Really, he told us that according to Rabbi, it has to be an edible shchita to require kisi adam. Rabbi dvar shem shem kisi adam. Right? Remember, Rabbi adopted Rabbi Shimon's opinion regarding kisi adam. Mishanu b'lashon chamei presented as the chamei's view, meaning as a consensus view. So if it's inedible, there's no kisi adam. So why couldn't that be a solution? You're right. Let me buy a comic. It goes without saying. Let me buy a trade troy. Of course, if you would have told him to do a trade troy. The shechita shein ruilish ma shechita, which is not a proper shechita. It's not an edible shechita. Of course, it wouldn't work. It would not require kisi adam. That's uh, basics. The main, the, the, the twist, the knech was, I would say nechur. But to tell him to make it nechur, perhaps, that doesn't really solve the issue. Ema, because perhaps I can say, Ein shkita leif in atayra, in atayra, you don't need a proper shkita, in chirasa, and even doing the chira, killing the bird in any way, zui shkita say, it's like a shkita, and therefore, the boy kisa would need kisa, and you couldn't use the blood, kamash, the point is no. Kasha tzivisich. From where we learned that there was a very specific, formal procedure of shkita required, unless that's done, there's no kisi adam. Okay, we'll leave the rest of the Gemara for tomorrow, Reza Hashem. In the meantime, we have a Mishnah, we had a Gemara, which analyzed our Mishnah vis-à-vis the other Mishnah back in Kisiyad, in, in Oisav Espenoi, conclusion being that according to Rabbi Danasi, by a Shkita, which is an edible, Shkita Shein Ruya, it still qualifies as Shkita regarding Oisav Espenoi, but not regarding Kisiyad. We discussed the sourcings, the Machlekes, between Rabbi and Rabbi Shimon in both cases. Uh, all the Rebbeir says, Shkita Shein Ruya Shema Shkita, but regarding the event Bekua, we can't uh, adopt, we can't apply to the event Bekua of a mother animal who's a trefa. On the other hand, Rabbi Shimon says, Shkita Shein Ruya Shema Shkita, but still, it will spare from being an available, even in the case of Chulam Bazora. We discussed the Sugi of Chulam Bazora, and we had the story where Rebbe advised Rabbi Chia to uh, extract the blood from the bird to save his uh, pishtan. And he was able to do so because it was either a shkita shein ruya, because it was a trefa, or there was no formal act of shkita done at all, which is required even by birds. All the best to you, Natsalachar.